What's up everyone? For those of you that don't know me, my name is Simran Singh. I'm going to be a dental student this upcoming fall and today I'm going to talk about every pre-dental's favorite topic, the DAT. So before I go into this video, let me just start by saying that I for one am not the best standardized test taker. It took me four to five tries to get the minimum score on the ACT to attend the undergrad institution that I attended, which was Michigan State University. And for those of you that know about Michigan State University, those requirements aren't that high. So standardized tests have always been something that I struggle with, and the DAT was definitely something that I was fearful of. But having already taken the exam with the right work ethic and preparation and the right mindset, achieving a competitive score is very attainable. All right, so let's get into it. So the DAT stands for the Dental Admissions Test. It's an exam that consists of four time sections, which I will talk about later in this video. And I'm gonna give you guys all the resources that I utilize, and I'm gonna give you tips and advice on how to study for the exam. So the first section of the DAT is the Survey of Natural Sciences. It consists of General Biology, which is 40 questions, General Chemistry, which is 30 questions, and Organic Chemistry, which is 30 questions. So you have a total of 90 minutes to complete 100 questions. So biology, in my opinion, was the most difficult portion of the DAT just because it has so much content. You could be asked anything from cell biology to questions about mosses. Like it's a very random section and it covers a lot of content. So I definitely put the most time studying for that particular section. So in order to study for the biology section, I utilize Clips AP Bio Notes and Paralysis Notes. And for those of you that do not know, Paralysis is some crazy smart dude who studied, I believe, six months for the DAT, if I remember correctly, and got a super high score. I think it was a 28, and he got a 30 in biology. So he made like an 80, 85 page Word document with like, some of the pages had like 10 point font on all the material that you could possibly be tested on the DAT. So I studied those, but from my understanding, DAT Bootcamp now has everything that was covered on Paralysis Notes in on their DAT bootcamp biology notes. So I would def definitely recommend studying those because a lot of people that I talked to found that very effective. But just for studying, I think the DAT bootcamp biology notes are a good resource because they cover the majority of the material that's on the DAT. But if you're more of a visual learner, I definitely recommend taking those concepts on those notes and looking at YouTube videos. I definitely utilize Crash Course a lot for cellular respiration photosynthesis because they had video animations of all the processes occurring. That was a lot easier for me to learn when I was studying for the exam. Uh, Bozeman Science is also a good resource. They have a lot of plant videos for all the plant material that's covered on the DAT. So I'll definitely link all that down below, but those are good studying materials. But in terms of practicing, DAT Bootcamp, without a doubt, is the best resource because they have so many practice questions and the explanations for those practice questions are very thorough. You guys will definitely hear me talk about DAT Bootcamp with every section, but in my opinion, I think it's the best resource when it came to studying for the DAT for me. So the next two sections on the Survey of Natural Sciences were General Chemistry and Organic Chemistry. And I think studying for those two go hand in hand because when I studied for it, I actually used two resources. I used Chad's videos and Mike's videos on Bootcamp. And I think both of them are really great resources. It's either or but Mike's videos comes with the bootcamp subscription, whereas Chad's videos, you have to get your own subscription to Course Saver. So it's just really dependent on preference and obviously money as well. But in my opinion, I think Mike's videos were better because for me as a learner, I think it was a lot more organized because they had really good and organized printouts where you could follow along and a lot of great practice. But, it's, but Chad's videos was also great as well. So. It honestly just depends on what you would rather have. But those are the two resources I would definitely utilize to study for general chemistry and organic chemistry. But in terms of practicing, again, Bootcamp is such a great resource. There's so many great practice questions on that website with every section. And you know, general chemistry and organic chemistry were obviously two that I found very helpful with DAT Bootcamp. And also DAT Destroyer. Um, the questions on DAT Destroyer for general chemistry and organic chemistry were really, really difficult. So I wouldn't be too discouraged if you didn't do well with DAT Destroyer because it is more challenging than the actual questions on the exam, but it's a great learning resource because some of the questions were multi-steps and two DAT questions could be compiled into one. 
So it was great practice and it really helped my understanding of both general chemistry and organic chemistry. But again, it's super hard, so I wouldn't be discouraged if you guys don't do well with it, but it's still a great learning resource for the DAT exam. So DAT Destroyer, I'll link that down below. Uh, another good resource that I found actually for extra practice was QVault's general chemistry. I had a little extra time when I was studying, so I ended up using that to study. QVault's also a great resource if you want extra practice, but again, it's gonna be more money on top of the other subscriptions you might have. So if you do have the finances, I would also recommend looking into that. But I do think DAT Bootcamp and DAT Destroyer were better resources. So the next section is perceptual ability. So the PAT section consists of 90 questions and you only have 60 minutes to complete that. The PAT section is definitely a section that's new to most people. And for me, when I was first looking at it, I was kind of intimidated. I was kind of sitting there like, man, I can barely tell the difference between diet and regular Coke and you want me to distinguish these angles by three to four degrees. But yeah, the perceptual ability section uh, definitely is just one that requires a lot of practice. And without a doubt, the best resource for that was DAT Bootcamp. There are a variety of strategy videos included with the program, and there's just a ton of practice. Their generators were amazing, and there's individual practice sections that you can take along with the full length exam. So there's tons of practice. It's just something you really have to work on every day and kind of just figure out what strategies work best, work the best for you. As I practiced more and found the strategies that worked for me, I definitely noticed a lot of improvement. So you get a break after those two sections, and then you come back and take the reading comprehension part of the exam. And you have 60 minutes to answer 50 questions. And for me, reading comprehension was a nightmare. Man, this is something that I just could never figure out on the ACT. And now that this section was on the DAT, it had me super intimidated. I practice an insane amount, definitely a lot more than most people, just because I started off so low and really tried to do as best as I could to improve. So I initially started off with the boot camp uh, reading sections, and I tried to figure out a strategy that worked for me. And for me, I ended up doing a variation of search and destroy where I would read every indi individual question number all the questions on my note sheet and write down keywords from the questions or sometimes even the entire question. So that way when I was reading the passage, I was reading with a purpose. Bootcamp gives you a lot of strategies, but none of them worked for me because I always did bad. So I kind of made my own strategy. So after I finished all the bootcamp exams, I invested into Crack the DAT, the reading passages for those. And I ended up practicing more just to get myself comfortable with reading passages and answering questions and continue to work on the strategy that I had developed for myself. And then after I finished that, I ended up investing into DAT QVault reading, which was also a great source. With reading, it just requires a ton of practice and you just need to find a strategy that works best for you. A lot of people find it quickly. A lot of people like me, it takes time. So it just really depends on the person you are. So the last section on the DAT is quantitative reasoning and it's basically just math. The best resources for the QR section are Math Destroyer and DAT Bootcamp. I also thought Course Saver was a great resource for QR as well because he had lessons on how to do specific problems and then he had great practice too. So when I had my Course Saver subscription, I utilized the QR lessons as well. I also utilized a lot of Khan Academy videos on YouTube to learn specific lessons that the QR section covered. But the DAT Bootcamp practice questions were very helpful and actually very very representative of what I saw in the actual exam. I just didn't end up doing well. Bootcamp had really good practice and the explanations for each question were really good. It really helped me understand why I got specific questions wrong. But yeah, that's my breakdown on how I studied for the DAT. I'm for one am someone who didn't do amazing on the DAT, but again, standardized tests were something that I always struggled with. But just being able to overcome the exam and getting a competitive score is something that I am definitely proud of. And Always keep in mind, regardless of how you do on the exam, your scores aren't a representation of who you are as a person. And that's the most important thing when it comes to this whole entire process. A lot of people do still get accepted with lower scores and that's because they're great people doing great things. So don't ever let a score on an exam or your GPA define who you are as a person. If this is something you genuinely wanna pursue, it will work out for you guys. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you found it resourceful and helpful. I will be uploading more content on this channel. And also when I start dental school in the fall, I will be vlogging my dental school experience. So please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram. And if you have any questions to me specifically, feel free to email me. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.